A single diamond once sold for more than $71 million, but the real story behind these precious stones is far more astonishing. Across America, billions of dollars worth of diamonds are created, not just unearthed, but transformed. From carbon atoms forged 150 kilometers underground in heat and pressure, no machine could survive, to the high security factories and auction rooms where fortunes shift hands in seconds. For every carat, nearly 250 tons of rock are moved, and each gem carries a history that predates the dinosaurs. So what does it truly take for millions of diamonds to make it from the depths of the earth to becoming icons of pure luxury? The answer begins far below your feet, where nature's most costly game of chance is still unfolding. Deep beneath the American continent, where sunlight never reaches, the earth conducts its most secret work. At depths of nearly 150 kilometers, carbon atoms are pressed together by forces that defy imagination. Pressures soaring above 50,000 atmospheres, temperatures climbing to 1,500 degrees Celsius. In this hidden world, carbon transforms, its atoms locking into a perfect cubic lattice. This structure gives diamond its unmatched hardness, a 10 on the Mohs scale, outclassing every other natural material. The process unfolds over an unimaginable span, one to three billion years while continents shift and mountains rise and fall above. But even in this vast timescale, the conditions needed are vanishingly rare. If the pressure drops, the carbon simply becomes graphite, soft enough to write with. Only when every factor aligns does a diamond begin to form, growing atom by atom into a crystal strong enough to resist the ages. Yet formation is only the beginning. To reach the surface, these stones must survive a violent journey. Ancient volcanic eruptions, called kimberlite pipes, act as express elevators, blasting diamonds upward at speeds that tear through solid rock. Most are lost or destroyed along the way, but a precious few are trapped near the surface, encased in blue-gray kimberlite. Each diamond that survives this gauntlet is a survivor from Earth's earliest chapters a relic from a time before the first trees, older than the dinosaurs themselves. Their scarcity is written in every facet, setting the stage for a human search that spans continents and lifetimes. The hunt for diamonds above ground begins with technology as sharp as the stones themselves. Geologists scan vast tracts of American wilderness using satellite imagery, searching for subtle changes in vegetation or soil color that might hint at kimberlite hidden below. Gravity sensors and magnetometers sweep over the land, measuring tiny shifts in the Earth's magnetic field, signals that could mark ancient volcanic pipes. Sometimes, a single pebble of kimberlite in a riverbed is enough to launch a full-scale operation. Once a promising site is found, the real excavation starts. Open pit mines spiral downward forming craters more than a kilometer across and half a kilometer deep. These immense scars on the landscape are carved by fleets of trucks and excavators, each load carrying tons of ore upward for processing. Where the deposits run deeper, miners descend into a labyrinth of tunnels, some stretching 700 to 800 meters below the surface. Down here, the air grows hot and heavy. Workers contend with humidity, constant noise, and the ever-present risk of rockfall or machinery failure. Safety protocols are strict, but the hazards remain real. The scale is staggering. To recover a single carat of diamond, barely the size of a pencil tip, crews must move and sift through roughly 250 tons of rock. Every truckload is a gamble, a race against time and nature. Only the most resilient stones survive this journey, and only the most determined teams can bring them to light. The next phase awaits, liberating diamonds from the rock itself. Rock from the mine enters the crushing circuit, where engineers calibrate massive jaw and cone crushers to reduce each chunk to less than 150 millimeters, never more, to avoid pulverizing the diamonds hidden inside. Even though diamonds can scratch steel, 
a single sharp blow can crack them, so every setting is tuned for just enough force. As the crushed ore moves onward, rotating drums and vibrating screens sift out oversized debris, while high-pressure water jets strip away mud and clay. This slurry, a dense mix of water and crushed rock, flows into the dense media separation plant. Here, ferrosilicon is added to create a liquid heavy enough that diamonds, denser than most minerals, sink, while lighter fragments float away. Only material in the narrow range above 1.5 millimeters is kept for the next stage. Anything smaller is usually discarded or sent for reprocessing. Concentrated ore now rides a conveyor beneath X-ray fluorescent scanners. Diamonds, when hit by X-rays, emit a faint glow invisible to the naked eye, but unmistakable to the sensor. In milliseconds, a blast of compressed air fires each detected stone into a separate bin, ensuring the gems are never mixed with waste. The process repeats thousands of times per minute, all under the watchful eye of plant engineers monitoring sensor speeds, slurry density, and ejection timing. What began as tons of anonymous rock is now a stream of liberated stones, each one intact, protected by a system where automation and human vigilance work side by side. A rough diamond, freshly sorted from the concentrate, enters a new world of precision and patience. The transformation begins with a digital scan, high-resolution 3D imaging maps every inclusion, edge, and flaw. Master cutters, some with decades of experience, study these scans alongside advanced software that simulates thousands of possible cuts. Each simulation weighs brilliance against carrot retention, plotting how to coax the most fire and value from a single stone. Lasers, thinner than a human hair, slice along predetermined planes, splitting the rough into pieces that will each become a unique gem. The risk is ever-present. One wrong angle can shatter a stone worth millions. Once divided, each fragment is placed on a rotating wheel coated in diamond dust. Here, skilled hands and sharp eyes guide the stone, facet by facet, through weeks of polishing. The process can take anywhere from three to eight weeks, depending on the complexity and size. Every adjustment, angle, pressure, speed, matters. The goal is to achieve perfect symmetry and unleash the maximum brilliance hidden within the crystal lattice. When the final facet is set, the diamond passes to a laboratory for grading. The Gemological Institute of America, or GIA, is the gold standard. Under powerful microscopes, gemologists evaluate the stone's cut, clarity, color, and carat weight, the four C's that define its market value. A microscopic laser inscription on the girdle links the diamond to its certificate, creating a permanent digital passport. Only then does the stone leave the realm of geology and engineering, ready to take its place in culture and commerce. Diamonds have not always been the ultimate symbol of status and romance. That transformation began in 1947, when a single phrase, a diamond is forever, launched by De Beers, changed the way the world viewed these stones. Through carefully crafted advertising, diamonds were woven into the fabric of love stories and life milestones. Hollywood films, glossy magazines, and celebrity endorsements all reinforced the idea that a diamond ring was not just a luxury, but a necessity for any true declaration of love. Behind the glamour, De Beers quietly controlled the global supply, releasing just enough stones to keep prices high and scarcity believable. Couture houses and master jewelers elevated this myth, turning each diamond into a promise of exclusivity. The value, it turns out, was as much about perception as geology, a story sold as eternal as the stone itself. In diamond-rich corners of Africa, Thousands of artisanal miners descend into hand-dug pits each morning, risking their lives for a day's wage of just one or two dollars. Many work without safety gear, exposed to collapse, disease, and the threat of armed groups who profit from the trade. These stones, sometimes called blood diamonds, 
have funded wars and left scars on communities, realities that linger despite international efforts. The Kimberley process, launched in 2003, was meant to certify diamonds as conflict-free, but loopholes and smuggling routes still let tainted gems slip through. While some miners see little reward, innovators in America are changing the story. In high-tech labs, engineers use HPHT and CVD reactors to create diamonds atom by atom, compressing what once took a billion years into a matter of weeks. The lab-grown market now moves billions each year, offering stones free from violence or exploitation. For some families, even grief is transformed. Companies like Algordanza turn ashes into memorial diamonds, forging personal legacies from loss. The future of diamonds is being written not only in mines, but in factories and labs, where value is measured by both beauty and conscience. The Pink Star Diamond sold for over $71 million in 2017, a record that underscores both the rarity and the global fascination with these ancient stones. Behind every polished gem lies a billion-year journey through Earth's mantle, the extraction of 250 tons of rock for each carat, and weeks of skilled human labor. While the Kimberley process, established in 2003, aims to limit the trade in conflict diamonds, reports still highlight loopholes and ongoing challenges in tracking every stone's true origin. The rise of lab-grown diamonds, now a multi-billion dollar market, offers new options that are chemically identical to natural stones, verified by institutions like the GIA. Yet, some aspects of diamond origins, such as full transparency in supply chains, remain difficult to prove. What is clear, each diamond, whether mined or created, tells a verified story of extreme conditions, human ingenuity, and enduring value shaped by both nature and society.